Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Write or Die show. I'm your host, Randy Lee Bosla. On the show, we interview other writers and we talk about mental health from their personal journeys. If you have not already hit that like and subscribe button, go ahead, do that now so that you never miss an episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Today with us, we have Sabrina Oso. How are you? I'm very well, Randy. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good. I'm just trying to get my curtains all up and organized and it's it's not working well, but okay. I love the background. I love it. So curtains or no curtains, it looks good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so tell us a little bit about who Sabrina is. Yes, I am a founder and CEO of Oso Safe. Feel safe where you live, learn, work, and play. I am a TEDx speaker, a real estate agent, and an author on promoting safety and preventing violence in the workplace schools, but in particular in your place of residence. So that's me in a two-sentence description. So that's what you do, <laughs> but who are you? Uh I am, <laughs> I am very uh, determined to make, well, maybe that's still what I do, um, but I'm a very strong-willed person, and my favorite color is blue, okay. <laughs> and I, I am a, uh, a dancer. Uh, yeah, dancing is in my DNA. Any and, particular uh, style or? I love it all, uh, but I, I do love uh, Latin partnering. Oh, that would okay. be my, my favorite, my favorites. Yes. And I, in fact, just recently I took a class uh, and I live close to New York City, but sometimes it's difficult for me to get to New York, you know, with the public transportation. So um, I found a lovely class pretty nearby actually was ballet and tap oh and it was so great it was so great um uh so I will be going back <laughs> oh well that's exciting yes yes okay <laughs> so yeah that that's much more about who you are you know <laughs> right right you're right you're right yes yes and uh uh yeah I love to dance I love I love everything about it you know um the the classes the rehearsals the performance the um just the uh costume no costume um all the styles ballet jazz tap hip hop theater wow um, nice yes yes i i love it i love it um well don't worry yeah. that was that was the hardest question of the whole interview <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, sometimes the simple questions are are the uh, the it tend, it tend difficult stump, ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's exactly. stumps everyone. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> switching gears here, getting into you know mental health. Why everybody's listening right now? Uh, start your story wherever makes the most sense for you. Okay, uh, I've had enough therapy. I've been in and out of therapy for quite some time where uh, I'm not ashamed to say I, I am a survivor of violence. Uh, my father beat my mother on a regular basis. My mother would beat me. So I know how traumatic it is. I know how difficult it is to go through it and speak about it and take away the shame, you know, uh, out of it and and um, we are big proponents of therapy at Oso oh Safe. In fact, I, I really don't know how you can get through life without therapy, some form of therapy, whether it be individual, like one on one or as a group or maybe a, a nice mix, whether it be on the phone or in person or um, uh, virtual or text whatever works for you it, it's okay let it be okay and um i i want to say to your listeners um anyone that's against therapy maybe they had a bad experience with therapy like they tried it once or twice and they said oh this was awful this was just crap <laughs> this was just um this is not for me this is not going to work 
let that be okay. Uh, you may have to try on a few for size. You know, it's definitely not one size fits all. And I'm sure you agree, Randy. It's Oh, yeah. We've you may- definitely said that on the show lots of times. Spot on. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, you may have to go through three, four, five of them uh, and let that be okay because not, not all therapists are created equal. You have to find the right fit. And uh, so don't let it discourage you. Don't think that there's something wrong with you. I mean, in the sense that, you know, obviously there's things wrong. What happened to you? What's going on? But don't think, oh, there must be something wrong with me that I didn't hit it off right away. No, it's just it wasn't a good fit. And um, and I, I like to say to people, to listeners, to audience members in any capacity, um, you know you have the right therapist when you leave that session a little less heavy. Oh, I like that. Yes. I you always know, because- I always cry so much when I'm in my therapy sessions, but when I leave, it's like Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know exactly what what we mean. Uh, it, it, because as a um, if you're going through trauma, if you're still in it or you're just coming out of it, or even if you've been out of it for a few years, a few months, you have the weight of the world on you. So so any release uh, after you f- you finish your session and you just it, it should feel a little less heavy. Bingo. That's your therapist. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm sorry if I go off on a tangent. I don't know. I, I, I don't oh, know if I, I always answer the do. Questions. Don't even okay. don't even worry about it. I <laughs> always go off on tangents, which is why yeah. I never have pre-set out questions. Um, okay. So, <laughs> no, you, you started us off, right? So you started off your story um, with... A, traumatic childhood by the sounds of it um so let's continue on from there so um how did you remove yourself from that situation or did you or how how did that go uh yes I did remove myself I I um I moved out and I but I got therapy before I moved out so that was a big help uh, my therapist, uh, I used uh, the university because I, I went to Montclair State and I used the psychological services there. And I just I, I went through all the noise. You know, what the hell am I doing this for? What if somebody sees me? There's a lot of shame. What if people find out? What if it doesn't work? All of that is noise. And let that be OK. You know, just just make the appointment and go. And, and then I, and then after I finished the sessions at the university, she said to me, you, you should really continue. So to this day, I go to the same therapist off and on. It's been decades now. And, um, and like I said, we are big proponents of, of therapy at Oh So Safe. So that helped a lot. It, it was a big eye opener. And I, I like to say I'm, I'm always a work in progress, you know, but, um, you know, like all of us, we're all a work in progress, but I want to say actually that I'm still healing from my trauma, but in a way I'm going through, I'm reliving it all over again. And it's been a couple of years now because my niece is a victim and I am doing all that I can to save her. And and I I am improving on oh so safe. I'm 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 twe- tweaking and and uh, making changes because the focus is children. Um, I feel like, and I'm sure you can echo this, Randy. Um, the laws, the courts, the judges, the so-called child protective service agencies—they're horrible. I'm going to yeah. say it right here, right now. They're horrible, and they make horrible matters even worse. So, um, and we've been through it all with my niece. So, um, and she, I, I love her. T- I love her beyond what's beyond. Um, and it pains me a lot. I don't want to cry. It pains me a lot to see her suffering so much. And she is a big gauge for me on 
how to move oh so safe and i'm i'm empowering children i think in ways that haven't been done before um and we could talk about that later on in the interview but yes i'm healing from my childhood but i'm kind of reliving it and tr and doing my best to heal her because of her pain it's yeah. generational that is a point that I was going to make. It is generational. So as you were saying, you know, your dad beat your mom, your mom beat you. I mean, that's kind of the same generation, but that's how it goes. One person does it to another and that person does it to another. And then that person generally does it to their kids. Their kids do it to their kids and so on and so forth, because they don't know that it's not okay. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, people are whatever, but a lot of times it, it's what they know. So if that's all they know, how is it wrong? Well, I, I want to say uh, they know. I, I want to take the position that they know, but because of their need to abuse, to, and to pow power, dominate, manipulate, control, they don't care. And, maybe maybe uh, that was the I, wrong words. What I mean is, let me try and pick my words a little differently. What I mean is... Sure, it's okay. No, that's okay. You, you made a good point because I, I do need to watch how I word things so I get my point across. Um, and again, this is a certain um, group of those individuals because everybody's brain is a little different. Um, but from my experience, let's say, if that's a better way to start it, from my experience... It is, it is about being in control, but it's, they don't know how to be in control without the yelling, without the fighting. They don't know a better way to get that control. Um, they weren't taught. So that's what I was trying to, to say. Like they might know it's wrong, but they don't know how else to go about do what they are trying to do. Right, right, and I, I right, and yes, uh, um, I agree. Uh, the thing is, like with my niece, her she is surrounded by verbal, physical, sexual abuse. Surrounded, wow. and and we have to talk about it. Um, I, I like we have to talk about it, and it's the only way because nothing ever gets resolved in silence. Nothing, and nothing ever yes. will. So we have to talk about it. And um, I'm using my own situation as kind of practicing what I preach. Her family members, the immediate family members, they know because they watch me. They listen to my videos. They hear me speaking out. I correct them. I say, look, you're being abusive. I've said it right to their face. Oh, you're good. being abusive. You are continuing the horrible pattern that was done to you it doesn't serve you you're hurting your daughter your you know your your niece your whatever the relationship is yeah. your granddaughter so on and so forth so and i have to say bottom line they don't care they just want to that they want that power they want that control and there's pornography involved unfortunately oh, no. that's where the sex abuse is and I, I want to speak out about it because so many children, unfortunately, are in my niece's situation. And like I said, the courts, they know about it. We have presented evidence. This is what's going on. <laughs> it's like, d did I say that? Did I, I said it, right? We said it, we presented it. But these judges, I have to say, are useless, unqualified, ignorant, and ill-informed, misinformed. They're not connecting the dots. And, and, you know, as a judge, you hold these child's lives in your hands. The last word is with you, judge. So do the right thing. But no, they're the parents or the step-parents. They have the rights. And my niece is forced to live with a, a sex abuser. So oh, you're breaking my heart right now. No, well, well, it, it's not about. Uh, um, um, I'm saying this to empower. To oh, I know, heal. I know. I'm just, you know, and I, a I little bit hit home, your, you know. Yes, yes. I, I I'm sure uh, all of us have gone through this, and it, like I said, we're reliving it. But it needs to get better. It, and this is what we do at Oh So Safe. 
we resolve it right in residency. We are offering products and services where where gaining more momentum, you won't need the courts. You won't need it it gets resolved right in residency because that's where it happens, right? Well, no matter where you live, um, it happens in some type of residency. So um I want to be hopeful on your show and we're not trying to be like, oh, this is horrible. This, and, and I'm not saying that you're saying that we're very positive. We're, we want to be very empowering. And my niece, um, she, she's just awesome. She's just awesome with everything that she's going through. It's amazing that she could smile and laugh and, and she is behind what we do at Oh So Safe. And and she's also Aww. the inspiration for my book. Okay, we're going to get to that soon. Um, So a question that's kind of been in the back of my mind um, for a while now. Do you currently have a relationship with your parents? My father passed away. Um, let's see, it's been uh, um, five and a half years. So he passed away five and a half years ago. And, uh, my mother is still alive. Well, I, I like to say she exists, but very much unalive. So, okay. um, because she's never healed and she's also still abusive. So, um, like, and, 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 and typically with abusive people they feel that well you made me do that to you mm. I didn't do anything wrong you made me do that to you and and I, I understand like um, I, I'm Italian I'm first generation Italian American so my parents were born and raised in Italy I mean it oh, really has I... nothing to do with it I mean this this spans over all religions all cultures nationalities religion uh, um, uh, all types of backgrounds right so um, but my mother was a child in a child marriage, really. She was engaged at 16, forced to marry, forced, forced to be engaged at 16, married at 17, had me at 18. Wow. So she, she really had no, um, she, she comes from violence and so did my father. So, so, um, but to this day, it's like she, she doesn't connect the dots and neither did my father, you know. So, so, um, so, but I, I use all of that to improve and, 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 and make oh so safe even better, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's turning pain into power. I hope I answered the question. <laughs> uh, you answered it enough. Um, and so I, I always find history of individuals kind of interesting I love I love listening to like murder podcasts things like that and not because I sympathize with the with the killer but I find the psychology behind people very interesting and I say that because I find it very interesting that you're, like you're totally right it spans everywhere across the world across nationalities religions everywhere but I find it interesting that there are cultures or places out there that are like oh yeah you can tell uh, I'm forcing you to get married. That's fine. Like that's the mindset. And I find it so interesting. Um, and that you can see the intergenerational trauma and abuse. Um, but you can break the cycle, which is exactly what you're doing. It does not have to continue, but it is, I, again, I find it sort of interesting to kind of look back and see, you know, how did this person get to where they are? And sometimes you have to do that in order to then move forward, right? Like you said, it's, you have to live, sometimes you're living through your trauma again when you're in therapy. And I just finished a pretty, pretty intense uh, few weeks at uh, therapy. And yeah, there was a lot of reliving through things. And so, yeah, I had to look back to now move forward. And that's why I find that so interesting that, you know, as you're telling this story about your mom and your dad, I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. Cause that's back then, or not back then, but that that place where they came from they were like oh yeah that's that's a normal thing to just force this child off we're here we're like what right oh. right yeah. and you know i i have to say um you know 
I, 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 this was, we're talking about decades ago. So this happened to my mother decades ago, but I believe the statistic is, and Malala Yousafzai, the Pakistani girl who's now a woman, she was shot by the Taliban and oh, yeah. because she wanted education for girls. Uh, uh, and I follow her. She, I, 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 I admire her so much. She turned pain into power, but her, her family was empowering they were very supportive of her. It was outside forces that said, no, you got to stay down. You, we don't want you educated. You're female, so on and so forth. But she has said, I believe currently in 20, uh, it, it's a recent statistic that I think, and don't quote me, but something like 150 million girls are not educated. They're forced to stay around the world, around yes. the globe. That is so that means they're being married off. They are not they're it's child marriage. They're forced to marry their rapist. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. So so we haven't we've improved in the sense of awareness. But as far as do taking action and and stopping it and preventing it, not only stopping it, but preventing it. It's 2023 for crying out loud. When are we going to, you know, we can't say, oh, well, that's what, that's how they used to do it. <laughs> and I know we need to now. Right. It's right. It was wrong then. It's certainly wrong now. And um, so it's, it's about education and the repetition of doing things right versus doing things, keeping, doing things wrong, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, just because it's always make, been doesn't mean it needs to always be. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I like what you said. I wrote it down. Looking back to move forward. I, I like that. Um, that's true. Yeah. You can quote me on it. <laughs> okay. Yes, I will. I will. <laughs> um, actually, as you were talking about, um, I always say her name wrong, but M Malala, right? I never say her name. Malala. Right? Malala. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, it reminded me of this TikToker that I follow. She lives in, I believe it's South Africa. I cannot remember what her um social tag is at this moment, but um she went, she got educated, um, became a teacher, um, went back to her village, and now she adopts many of the children in the village or if she doesn't officially adopt them she says yes you can come live with us here at the school um because of so many child marriages and stuff and she she makes tiktoks to bring awareness to it and i think um like raising money and stuff to take care of like feed all of these children and so as you're talking about that i was like so there are you know it is making progress um, because there are people out there, like you said, awareness, but not just awareness. There are people out there that are trying very hard to to fix it. Um, and so she may I really enjoy her TikToks where she's talking about like she'll you she'll make a little skit about uh, oh, I just found out there's a child marriage, and then like she marches off to stop it, uh, kind of thing. And I'm like, yes, you go, girl. <laughs> um, and that is so, it's, so great, it's so good. Yeah, I, I absolutely love her. She hasn't come up on my, my TikTok algorithm has been wacky lately. I'm not getting the people <laughs> that I follow and I'm like, why am I not getting the ones that I like? But anyways, she's pretty awesome. If uh, she ever comes across anybody's TikTok feed, give her a follow. Um, maybe one day I'll remember what the, uh, what the tag is. Yeah, I'm going to Google a TikTok, a South African uh, girl. Yeah, I, I'm definitely, and if I, if I find her, I will, uh, I will pass it on to you for sure. Um, that is so great. Uh, th th that is so great. And 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 it sounds like she's taking a taboo subject and making it untaboo, right? Yes. Like she's putting an element of comedy. Not that the subject matter is funny, haha. <laughs> but she to kind of you. What's the saying? You could catch more bees with honey than with vinegar yes. or whatever. You know. Yes. So. That's great. And and we, we firmly believe in that. We I do the same thing on, on my TikToks. Um, just we have to talk about it. And, you know, like people will say, well, you know, uh, how do you talk about these things? Like it, it it's so sad. It's so I said, well, imagine how the kids feel 
Yeah. They have to go home to that. They have to live with that. Like my niece, I mean, how do they feel then? And their children, you know, right. not that it would be okay if it was happening to an adult, but children are, they're suffering so much. And I feel like not enough is being done to protect them on a local level, let alone a global level, mm -hmm. um, which is what we're, what we're trying to do, you know, with, with everything that we're doing and, and, well, and, and like what, who you mentioned, you know, yeah. yeah, she's fantastic. I wish I could remember her, her handle, but if, when I come across it, I'll um, share it of course, but um, yes, yes. And I'm sure she will. I'm sure these things um, put the energy out there. It'll come back. <laughs> exactly. Now that I've talked about it, it will pop up, which is good. Um, right. Well, and as you're talking about, you know, it, it, it's bad if it happens to adults and children, like it is just a bad thing. But as a child, even a teenager, um, and I would go home and not know what to expect. Was there going to be yelling and screaming and fighting or was it going to be a good day? Right. And as a child, I didn't know that there was other options. I didn't know that I could talk to somebody. I didn't know. Um, I couldn't move out on my own. Um, so you're stuck. Like th these are the people that are supposed to take care of you and love you. And th this is love, I guess. And so that was a big struggle for me, right? Is that, okay, that that's what love is. So this is what I'm expecting from my marriage and, and my family, which is not the case at all. Um, lots of therapy and definitely that is not how my marriage runs, but that is what I thought for a long time. This is what I can expect for the rest right. of my life because this is what I see. And so that is, that's the perpetuating generational cycle. If no, if you don't go and get help and realize that there is something different, something better out there, then you just keep doing the same thing. And so when you were saying that, I just had a little like flashback of my child. Well, I say childhood because even as teenagers, we're children. I, I keep telling my my uh, sixteen year old, "You're still a child." <laughs> um, but you know, from from the age of fourteen on, that's what I saw. So. Yeah, I had like, wow. Yeah. Good for you that it's, you don't continue it. And, and, and it's a practice, you know, it's a practice. I thought the same thing that, wow, this is normal. In fact, in fact, I, and I still to this day, I have a hard time, but I'm, I am getting better at it when good stuff happens. It's almost as if a shocker, like, wow, <laughs> like <laughs> something good happened or, uh, I, I'm in a healthy relationship and have been for quite some time. And even my therapist said, Sabrina, it's, pro it's, it's a miracle that you, 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 your partner, your longtime partner is not like your dad, because usually that's who you wind up with. So, and yeah, I think that was that's the, the my first attempt at, at life. And then I realized, no, 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 no. <laughs> right, right. No, good for you. Um, and, and that's our job as former victims, survivors, is to not repeat it. it. It's our job. Our one job is to not repeat it with ourselves, with our friendships, with our relationships, with our children. That's your one job. Um, because otherwise, your abuser wins. They oh, win. Like I like how you say that. And so for my story anyways, and, and not that the show is about me, it's about you today, but um, no, 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 <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. That... Um, so for, for it, it was my stepdad. And uh, even after he died, so he was hit by a car um, while he was walking to the bar one night. And this is, oh, gotta be at least 10 years ago now. Um, it the trauma of what he did still was there. He was still winning past his death. Um, he's no longer, but that was, that's how it felt was that he was still winning and he wasn't even in existence anymore. Right. I totally agree. And I feel that way with my niece. It's like, uh, yes, I I'm healing. I'm still healing. But my dad's wrath, and he's gone, he's been gone for five and a half years, it's still continuing because my niece, I'm witnessing my niece and all of her pain and suffering. And 
it's just um uh it's like as if he's not gone and he's gone he's gone we buried him yep <laughs> but he's he's he his um wrath his uh, abuse his violence chaos, chaos and dysfunction is still alive and and why why you know I, like i've al- we've always heard the saying life is short right life yeah. is short but it depends what kind of a home you have because if your home is hell life is not short enough you want to go you just want to disappear yeah but and i i understand now that that saying as an adult like yeah life is short if you have good things and you have a good support system and you have uh, um a, a good family yeah life is short you 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 go into your teens your 20s 30s 40s whatever it is um and yeah and then before you know it it's like wow uh I'm about to retire or, or of, of that age, or, you know, you're getting all this weird mail like AARP and it's like, what, what happened? And, and yeah, life is short, but only if you grew up in a healthy environment, because if you didn't, uh, I mean, I, I personally know four people that committed suicide wow. all under the age of 36 and all of them are men, boys. So, and I know their background. I know their their childhood, and uh, especially a few of them. And I know for them, life was too long. It was too long because of their suffering, because of the abuse that they endured. So, um, so yeah. So I I totally understand, Randy. <laughs> yeah, um, and just when you're saying it, it was men, it that's a hot topic that my husband and I often talk about because he was raised as, as many um, males in, in my generation, men are tough. Men do not cry. Men do not ask for help men. And you know, all of that. And so that is, that is in his mind. And so when he is having, you know, days when he's not so fine, um, he doesn't talk about it because you don't talk about it. Men don't talk about it. And then they end up right. as those individuals that you know, which is absolutely heartbreaking. So, you know, that's why I, I'm so glad that so many guests on this show have been men. It's pretty, I mean, I don't know the statistics, but I feel like it's pretty 50-50 for, for men and women coming on the show, um, which is fantastic because then it shows other men out there that you can talk about it. Yes. Yes. And I'm so glad you brought that up because we do a huge disservice to our boys, you know, from a very young age, stop crying like a girl. Don't throw like a girl. Don't be a sissy, be a man, man up and everything that you said. And it's, it's, you know, those tear ducts are on men and women, boys and girls, and they're there to clean our eyes and every, and they're to cry to let it out and in fact reward them that they're expressing their feelings and otherwise they're volcanoes they become volcanoes and and that's what we do at also safe we teach um that in order to become a man to boys in order to become a man you don't you you're not hostile to girls the girls in your life the women in your life as you get older um same thing with girls you don't teach them to be submissive and 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 vice versa. There are women that are abusive. We're not saying abuse is abuse. It's harmful either way, whether you are uh, the victim as a as a male or female. It's horrible, especially for the children that witness it. It's it's horrible. So um, so I, I, I'm, I'm glad I, I'm glad. I, and it means, like you said, that men are becoming less afraid to say yeah i'm feeling angry i'm feeling upset i cry i i um i feel disappointed i feel great <laughs> great yeah great keep keep feeling keep crying keep um the pain has to come out otherwise it'll turn to violence it'll turn to abuse 
it'll turn into um uh just everything that that you don't want you don't want you know um so that's great and this is a practice it's a practice which you're even saying you're echoing it, it it's a practice it's not it's not about you're never going to fight with your partner and that everything is peachy key and everything is perfect. Yeah, and so. we're not saying that. We're not saying that at all. You're going to fight. You're going to have arguments and conflict, but it should never cross that line of abuse, not verbal, not physical, not sexual. And the big ingredient of that, of a healthy household is respect. Always respect. Um. So you've mentioned oh so safe numerous times. Oh, excuse me. Um, so tell us a little bit more about it now. Like, so I, I kind of have a gist from it being mentioned, but tell us about it. Um, thank you, Randy. Thank you for the opportunity. I, I can't thank you enough. Um uh oh so safe is combining products and services to promote safety and prevent violence. Um, in the workplace schools, but in particular, our, f- our focus is in places of residence. So we are we are introducing into the real estate industry um, also safe certifications for properties, and this is uh, we we want this to propagate over all residency. But right now, we're just concentrating on landlords and tenants because that's the path of least resistance, if you will. We're saying, look, Mister and Miss Landlord. Hire us, we'll get your property oh so safe certified. What does that mean? They purchase the oh so safe home sweet home package. It consists of a policy, a seminar, an app, and therapists assigned to the property. So the po- I'll just briefly describe those four components. The policy basically states, I as a landlord, I promise to provide you a safe space for you to live. You, in turn, is my tenant. You promise to not act in any way, shape, or form abusively. Otherwise, you, the abuser only, gets immediately evicted from the premises. And we go into full knowledge knowing that that would be the consequences. So there's no surprise. There's no, oh, okay, uh, you got to go because you pulled your partner's hair. No, you know because the policy states it very clearly and it's it's very um, out in the open. And also in the in the policy, it states that children have rights way before 18 years of age. Uh, yes. And I'll explain I'll explain that a little bit further. Uh, the seminar uh, in the seminar, the seminar is the home sweet home seminar. Everybody gets educated, Randy, on facts, statistics, warning signs, definitions of abuse, the difference between abuse and discipline, what constitutes a good relationship the children and the adults get get educated so that way again there's no surprise and you get some basic education okay if you uh how do you communicate to your partner i don't like this but i like this when you do this it makes me feel this way so that way we're not going in blind in residency and waiting for an episode of violence to occur and part of that seminar is we use our book our children's book and I could talk about that a little bit later as a staple to give children a voice that they have choice over their residency the third component is an app Um, I hired a software company to and they went by my specifications to detect they wrote software to detect violent like movements so the app will detect oh wow Let's say you have 10 units. I just saw you beat the crap out of her in my unit two, and you just beat the crap out of him in my unit 10. Well, that is grounds for eviction. You knew that this was going to happen. So it eliminates the he said, she said factor. Then the fourth and final component of the certification is therapists assigned to the property. So we require in an also safe certified property to check in with your therapist once a month. Is everything okay? Do do you feel like anything is looming? Well, uh, Mr. and Miss Therapist, actually, our kid came home with bad grades. We're not going to beat them up. We're not going to verbally disparage them. We know better because we are held to a higher regard, a higher standard in a no-so-safe certified property. 
but help us through this because we don't know what to do. This is all, all of these components working together makes for better residency and it's preventative versus waiting for an episode of violence to occur. Police come, you hear yelling and screaming, um, bad news travels fast. And we're kind of flipping the script on residency where instead of you as a landlord or a property owner in general, you're stuck with the abuser. No, why should your your well-behaved, your, your safe practicing tenants leave when it should be the other way around? The abuser is the one that's got to go, not your not your safe practicing tenants or residents, if you will. And like I said, we want this to propagate over all residency, whether you rent, whether you own, whether you have a mortgage or not. Um, so that is our core product is the Oso Safe certification. And 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 just the last thing that I want to say is that our logo gets placed outside of the property. So that way any okay. driving any vehicle traffic or or pedestrian traffic, they're looking for a place to live. Oh, I know what that logo means. That means they practice safety. They have mechanisms in place in case something happens. I would rather live there as a single person, as a parent, as a parent to be. Um, it, it, it it's 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 making for better residency, safer residency overall. That's so interesting. Well, I hope that uh, it takes off and, and you, you see lots of those stickers Thank in the you. windows. That's very cool. Thank you. Um, so your your kid's book, tell us. Yes, um, I don't know. It, uh, um, it was a little bit blurry before, but it's I think if you bring it more in front of you, we should be able to see it better. So to... Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, it's, it's still a little, a little blurry, blurry, but we can it's still kind okay. <laughs> of make it out. It's okay. Um, it's uh, Home Safe Home for You and Me. That's the title of it. And uh, and I published it, uh, I think it was towards the end of oh, October, last October. And it's basically, um, like I said, my niece is the inspiration of it. The dedication is to her. And it's giving voice to children and explaining the difference between respect and disrespect. And it, mm. it, it clearly gives um, a description of, uh, like, I, and I give scenarios, if there's any hitting, punching, slapping, um, it introduces, that's not an oh so safe, that's not oh so safe, that is dangerous for everybody. And if it's making you feel yucky and scared, well, you're right to feel yucky and scared. That's not respectful. And and to introduce something called the Oh So Safe Kids Cheer, um, where I am introducing to say, who do you feel safe with, kids, if it's not mommy and daddy or stepmom or stepdad or whoever it is that you live with? And if, yeah. and you, you can lie, obviously kids lie, right? If they're scared, oh, yeah. they'll lie. They could say, I'm safe with mommy and daddy, but meanwhile, they're not safe. However, we know in, 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 we know as former victims of violence, parents that are abusive, step parents, whoever is abusive in your household, they could, they could have, they could hold their poker face for a month a couple of weeks, a couple of days, but sure enough, their true abusive colors come out. So yeah. we find out in Oh So Safe Certified Properties who they feel safe with. And in the book, I explain, say your cheer. I want to live where I am oh so safe. And I am oh so safe with whoever that is, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a close family friend. And it's introducing to children, you have a say, you have choice who you want to live with. Why wait until you're 18 years old? It's too late. It's too late yeah. to live. And children know who make them feel safe. They know. In fact, it's a page in my book. You kids know. And, and to introduce. 
Um, yeah. So, and also just to introduce like breathing, like when the fighting stops, go to a safe place in your home and breathe and stay in the moment. And this is not your fault. And to say the cheer and, um, and that we're working as fast as we can. Oh, so safe kids to make all of you kids oh so safe at home. And and I want to say we're speaking to all kids, whether they're safe at home or not safe at home. The book is very inclusive. Yeah, that was, that's a really good book and such a good idea. Because it does. Thank it, you. It, and I like the, um, the cheer. First off, that's, that's kind of fun. But um, the language that you were using right? You were talking in a way that kids talk. Right, right. Yes. And I'm, I'm looking to do some readings at, at uh, anywhere, uh, but libraries. Um, My niece's friend actually got the book in her library, her school library. I, she, I, I, I'm so grateful to her. And uh, in fact, I was told that the library made a new section for child safety, like connecting school safety with home safety. And um, yeah, so I try to break it down so that way they really understand. And I want them to feel like I was speaking to them, you know, kids of all ages, but especially yeah. I would say pre-K to even a, a teenager, like early teen, teen years, you know, um, because you know when you're not safe you know you know and you know i know yeah. <laughs> we all you know. might not you might not know exactly the words but you know what it feels like you you know when you don't feel right. okay right 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 and it's not their fault and so the book breaks it down and um yeah i've been getting positive feedback from it which is so great and my niece my niece loves the book and that was a big um like stamp as like kid stamp like approval uh, uh because she yeah she it it spoke to her in a big way that's fantastic i love that um so where do people follow you uh we have a website osofsafe.com but we're on all the major social media uh uh sites the facebook linkedin twitter instagram um and we just started, well, not just started, but uh, we have a YouTube channel, uh, Oso oh Safe Kids. Uh, I mean, they could just Google Sabrina Oso or Oso oh Safe Kids. And we speak openly about abuse, about safety, about dating, about the warning signs, and that it's not your fault if you're getting abused. Um, and also on TikTok. Uh, TikTok and YouTube are for the kids, uh, Oso oh yes. Safe Kids. Yeah. And the book is sold on Amazon. Um, it, it is sold on Amazon. So those are the best ways to reach us. I love it. And what, what was your TikTok handle? Is it just Sabrina Oso or Oso Safe? Uh, Sabrina Oso, I think 66 or just six. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, I have yeah. to try and find you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing. Um, I probably could continue talking to you. I think we're out of time. Um, so, and that's okay though, because I think we just overloaded everyone's brain with a lot of information, which is, you know, good. So thank, thank you, you, Randy. This was so great. You were a great host. We really appreciate the opportunity. Bye. As always, thank you so much for the amazing guests that we have on the show. Um, be sure to check out their links down in the description below. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and check out our merch store. We've got some very cool things on there. That's my favorite. Sorry, I'm busy ending the stigma. Um, but there's some other very cool designs. 10% of the proceeds always goes back to the Canadian Mental Health Association. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at RV Media because we have some great new shows coming up. And you never want to miss any of those episodes. And remember, the only way to end the stigma of mental health is to speak openly and honestly. Bye!